This is Captain Sweep, and I have an update from Sky. We talked last week, and it was the beginning of his journey into the very secret plan. But now, things are changing quickly. Captain Sweep would like to know what you have to add, Mr. Sky. <laughs> Hello, Captain Sweep and everybody out there. Um, first, I want to just send out my love and appreciation to all of you for being on this journey with me and, and uh, being in this collective field of love and light that we're all sharing in. Um, I, am, I have a lot of compassion for the, the people that are out there that are um, working on the front lines um, that are really doing a lot of uh, prayer work right now and um, just those that are holding the light, you know, um, in the face of, of all the fear. I just want to uh, commend you for the, for the great efforts that you're doing in this time. Um, yeah, I, uh, like I was saying on the last one, you know, there's many levels that we can perceive the reality that's happening. Um, we can perceive it from the level of the, of the rept reptile or the serpent, um, which is the very kind of core, deeply physical version of the reality. So on the deep core physical version of reality, there is this virus or um, a mutation of a virus that has been around and in our bodies for a long time. From what I'm hearing, the, the virus itself is not contagious. So it actually cannot be passed from person to person the way it has been told. Um, but that the frequencies uh, of 5G are actually activating and mutating this virus within our cells and, um, act and, and, and while also hampering the immune system. Um, okay, so that's on the really sort of physical level. Taking it up to the higher level, there is a massive awakening that's happening on the planet. There are forces of light, there are waves of uh, vibrational frequency that are hitting the planet. This is really what's going on. There's an awakening that happens, and and for that to happen, it we have to um, we have to be able to witness the darkest parts of humanity. We have to go through this dark night of the soul. This is essentially a, a vision quest. We've been forced into our homes by Big Daddy, and saying, you know, go and and go be with yourself, and go look at your mortality and see. Uh, that, uh, you know, we've been running from this, this idea of death, death of Grim Reaper. So I kind of spoke about that in the last, the last talk, but um, uh, I think really what we need to, to know at this point is that um, this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to rise uh, into your full potential to, to choose the path that you're about to go on in the next little while. Um, the Hopi prophecy talk about this time where these two paths separate between the one hearted and the two hearted. Um, this is an opportunity uh, to, to choose, to make a really clear choice. Uh, are you going to propel and perpetuate along the path of fear? Or are you going to stand up in your sovereignty and in your uh, true light and power and choose to, to face any of the life's challenges with uh, a, a certain amount of faith, a faith in a benevolence, a faith in something that's bigger than yourself, faith that there is truly something that's happening on a level that we can't understand. And I think from that place, we could work out every, um, all the smaller details like 5G. You know, 5G cannot be worked out through fear. It will just be another war. It'll just be another battle. But when we truly rise, we'll start to see that we have technologies that are being created that are benevolent technologies that we can add into our systems. You know, we can, we can force or, you know, as a collective, we can come together and we can, we can make new choices available that can't be denied. You know, we can support scientists. There's going to be a lot of scientists that are coming forward in the next little while with different true understanding of what's really going on. And, Collectively, if we, we put our light and, 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 and actually come back into a space of faith and trust, we can actually get behind some truly benevolent new, new ideas, new concepts, new belief systems, new ways of thinking, new collective coherent 
structures that um, that can really radically change the planet. So, um, it, but it starts with faith, deep sense of having a faith in in this awakening. You know, every ancient tradition on the planet has talked about. Um, so, that's kind of uh, the gist of it at this point. And say that it's not happening on the real physical and we shouldn't protect ourselves from 5g but that <clears throat> really the place to start your your quest start the quest is really to look within and see where there's resistance see where's disdain see where there's anger see where there's shaming of yourself and others see where you're creating separation in the field see perpetuating old belief systems and do not need to perpetuate it anymore and that we need to let go of and, uh, and, and embrace the potential of us being divine beings, divine beings, having infinite potential. Um, and so that's the way I see it. Um, I, I, I try and, um, you know, if, if there is a moment of shock, say I get a piece of news or information that feels scary or, you know, some way, I, I just sort of sit back breathe into that for a little bit and, and look within myself. What, what lie am I telling myself that even allowing this to create disharmony within myself, you know? So it's a, it's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, opportunity right now for, for, to know thyself. And so, you know, that's the best way you can take, that's the path ahead is to, is it self empowerment is taking this as an opportunity, an opportunity to come together in ways, opportunity to stand in new power, to be a part of something greater than yourself, to be, you know, and that that's that's the exciting. It's very exciting time. We're in the front row seats of, of a galactic wave of change uh, that is uh, going to nothing will be the same after this is done. This this world will be different. It'll be changed forever. We, are not going to be placed much longer. So, and, and it'll be an upgrade. There'll be a, there'll be some changes that the government will make. Some things that won't. They won't. They'll feel like it's still old paradigm. You got to understand that still a lot of these people that are creating are even going to try and create new structures um, are creating it from the imbalanced mind. Still, you know, it will look a lot better. There's going to be a lot of things that will change and look a lot better. I mean, you know, just being nice is a pretty universal value that I think everybody gets other than a few very distorted, wounded pedophilia type satanic people, you know, I mean, that's a fairly small, I mean, it's not small, it's massive, but it's small in the, in the context of the collective. Um, the, the majority is benevolent the majority gets that being a good person is a good way to go. You know, that, be, you know, that shit, a good way to go that everybody having enough is a good way to go that you know doing harm is not a good thing you know be nice be good and i think that that those will return but some of the structures will still come from and i'm seeing it even in our own spiritual community and is that you know we all still have to pay our rent you know we all still have these these ideas and concepts around commerce that um are outdated uh, and, and, you know, we need to start asking the elders, asking the, the clan mothers, like, how can we move ourselves back into a new place of, of doing business, you know, where we're in a sharing economy and we let go of, you know, some of those structures. But so I think some of the stuff is still going to be created from some of the old ideology and paradigm, but um, it's going to be look a lot better. And then it's going to exponentially uh, once because there's a lot of, like I said, scientists and, and inventors and people that are, are really realizing that right now that, you know, hoarding a, an invention, you know, a patent, you know, for your own personal gain when it can completely change the whole paradigm of the world, you're playing the role. I don't care if you think you're a spiritual person, if you're holding back technology so that you, or anything so that you can make more profit, you are playing a part. So these are the things that I think are going to start to happen is people are going to realize, oh my God, 
I'm a part of this by investing in oil, by investing in 5G, by being a part of it. I, you know, I had to look at that years ago and I saw in my own portfolio because I was had mutual funds that in my mutual fund portfolio, I was like, you know, investing in oil while I'm also on, you know, picketing, you know, these oil companies. So finding those places in yourself where you're participating is going to be a big part of this. And, uh, and really coming back to, to truth, like where I am, what am I truly serving? You know, throughout my being, what am I putting out? What are my thoughts? Do I have a disdain for humanity? Do I still have a, a religious doctrine that is separating me from another whole culture of people? Do I have a, a belief around spiritual elitism that I'm better than someone else or, or, you know, smarter than someone else? You know, how do we come back to really holding one another as divine and perfect as we are? And I think that is really where this is going to take a whole exponential leap into us embracing that not all government, not all paradigm, not all businesses, not all people are evil and wanting to harm that actually there's, there's a plethora of good that once we, we, they, these people are really rise into the occasion that we have this opportunity that we have. Um, I think we're going to see a whole bunch of new leaders emerging right now. We're going to see a whole bunch of new, you know, David Ikes and, you know, Greg Braden's and, you know, all like, you know, these types of people that um, have, we've kind of been listening to for all this time, there's going to be a whole bunch of new voices. There's gonna be a whole bunch of new narratives and, and they're going to be a lot of uh, opportunity uh, for, for our collective to, to rise in a powerful way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reflect back this question for you. I mean, what, uh, what's alive for you in this moment uh, with what's going on, everything you've been looking at um, and sharing? And uh, I mean, where are you internally as far as this process of, um, you know, the Illuminati, the, the virus, the 5G, the well, adrenochrome? <laughs> You give me great confidence in, in the future, and I feel good listening to you. And if I, I compare us, let's say, to a, a normal news anchor team, and we're like a new paradigm news anchor team. And I'm listening to, to my cohort, and I'm like, yeah, I'm with that guy. I agree. And I'm going along, but then some side of me is going, wait a second. I mean, <laughs> if the virus is actually activated by, by the 5G, but everyone believes it's contagious. And so you've got this insane corporate media, Illuminati, you know, machine of, media, of feedback. It's giving this sort of worldview to people. And we're, we're, we're not agreeing with it at all. And we're actually saying, oh, wait a second, guys, <laughs> something else here to watch out for that is way more dangerous than what they're talking about mm. and but you're saying it in a good light and you're saying it in a way that i think humans need challenge and even danger to get them to change to get them to move out of their comfort zone and most humans you know are kind of like hobbits and they got their beer and they got their pizza and they're watching tv watching movies and you know most people don't really want to go beyond that uh, but if the house is on fire and there's robots outside with flamethrowers, people generally tend to change quickly. And I, I think the Jedi Knight needs that type of challenge. So the spiritual warriors on the planet who've been training, who've been preparing, who've been watching are now, it's kind of like, well, you know, the Hopi prophecy points to now and, you know, he's pointing to now and I'm like, we're all going like, now is the time to actually bring your work into the world, or now is the time to step up into your potential. And so I agree with you in terms of this, sometimes it's the squeezing of the pressure that brings out the best in the person to rise to the occasion to then do something about the larger issues of our times. And, and I, I, sort of, I love that. <laughs> I just, I just, you know, imagine, like when you really imagine all these satellites going around the planet, and then all these transmitters going around on the ground and then going to turn on. I mean, this is, this is basically telling you know, this is basically, okay, the AI is telling the humans, I want power. <laughs> the humans are going, well, okay, somebody said we gotta get this up. And Patrick wants to watch some quicker movies. 
and okay, so we'll put these towers up and we'll put these satellites up. And uh, that would consider the long-term health difficulties that might be there for the bees, you know, for the for the whales, you know, not just the humans, but the animals, the insects, and the ecosystem that isn't used to this type of frequency. And so, like all of, you know, if you look back in history, what isn't really brought up is these pandemics seem to have a very strong correlation to a new technology, usually in regards to some sort of frequency change. Like when they first came out, it was like a, a, a radio, when they first came out, radar, they first came out with uh, satellite belts, like the, the human species was hit by what they call a pandemic. And this is something that, you know, not many people are bringing up, but because of the internet, because of media, and because of these little videos passing along, and all of a sudden, some guy figured it out, and now they pass it on, and now they're passing it to us, and we're passing it on. There's this real ability to share knowledge quickly, and if you've got strong intuition and you're doing your research, you can kind of pick something out that kind of makes sense to the party line, and then you put the dots together over all the years you've been researching, and, and you can't look at this as an isolated event. You have to see it as a sequence of events. And you really have to look at, I think, 9-11 and look at, okay, well, that's that's a big one, right? Because they got to get away with a whopper. Like, they just got away with a whopper. They got away with that one. It's like anything else is like, <laughs> So, you know, I, 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 I agree there's going to be great transformation. I agree that there's great opportunity. But the downside of the, I guess, potentiality is that there is risk. There is, you never know how it's gonna go. And I mean, I, I do have some sort of idea that within the Mayan calendar, it speaks about the ethical you know, layer coming above the power layer and that it has to be, it, it is irrefutable or that we may be coming into a photon belt, a greater light as frequencies raising and changing. So it has to be. So there's no way, let's say, the good guys can lose. there's been a lot of good guys in the past that thought that that got wiped out because they didn't you know they said hey everything's gonna be fine we gotta got prepare and they go wah 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 and all of a sudden the bad guys who don't care about things came in and wiped them out and so you know it's it's this battle of, of as goodness and evil and the jedi knights i i just think we need more organization and we need more structures that are, new paradigm, that are actually being used by groups of people to work together in commerce. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's why I go towards planetary guardians, go toward a game, and go toward a way of keeping score, a way of keeping score of how to bring these good things together in a way like they are organized. Those freaking nutballs, I don't know if you've looked at the World Economic Forum site, but they are organized. Like from a systems perspective, from a breakdown of 200 levels, across all areas that are connected to the coronavirus. Like they, they have a plan that they've been working on for 30 years and they say they came up with it for in three months, but now they're implementing this boom, 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 all across everywhere. So I guess I'm glad there's a waking up, but I think, you know, it's like, okay, now we gotta do something. You woke up, well, you just gotta lie in bed. You gotta go actively activate your superpowers yeah yeah well i mean every you know it's not a one my opinion is it's not a one approach one off approach i mean everyone has a purpose right and i think that there is a well, there's an old saying it's like trust and tie up your camel you know <laughs> like you know you still got to be practical right i mean you're right like there is a real threat of this 5g tower um, but I, I mean, what, like, can you trust that the masses that are, that are awakening to this agenda and to these threats, um, the amount of, uh, of sort of millennials and young powerhouse next, next tier of, uh, of people that are literally going to go out and burn these things down. I mean, you know, I, tr I guess what I'm saying is I trust that the, people that are going to go burn them down and know that that's what they need to do. You know what I mean? And I know that I'm now 47 year old 
father holding a space of love and trust and um and there's elders that are praying that believe that you know when a collective prayer we did a we did a prayer with unify and and a whole bunch of global organizations yesterday that uh uh, I heard numbers that it's it's potentially as high as one billion people were meditating at a at a very specific time yesterday, and I know that through the Unify group, uh, along with some of the Buddhist monks in in in, in uh, Thailand, we blew through the 144,000 mark. And the love and the power that I was experiencing, it it definitely said to me, "This is on, like this is on in a big way," and. Um, so what I'm saying by faith in that way, brother, is it's happening through all of us and each one is going to have a role, including these very scientific people, very left brain that are, you know, still good in their heart, you know, and, and, and other, you know, politicians that are good people. And um, so I, I'm returning to a sense of faith because I think a lot of this, if you look at Star Wars, is this kind of like separation between the father, right? It's the, it's the Darth Vader, uh, you know, aspect, right? This, he has this black met helmet that cuts him off from the light, from, from getting the divine information into his light. He's so wounded that he's cut off, just like these leaders. They are so wounded. They are, they are victims of thousands of years of persecution and colonialism and reptilian agendas and, and, and just complete uh, unconsciousness, you know? And so they're carrying the deepest wounds and, and we've allowed that to, you know, run our, our economy and our government and our corporations. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it really is just because we fell asleep. You know, when the people rise, no amount, nothing, Nothing will stop it. Nothing. Not, I mean, can you imagine the power of the people um, when we awaken? Um, I don't care how many 5G towers you put up. You're not going to stop it. You're not going to stop it. You better get out of the way. You better get on board with the new emerging, you know, culture that is just going to birth through. Just like, the, you know, you find, you find those little tiny green leaves that poke up through the concrete and you wonder how that little green leaf came through the concrete you know like that we have that level of power collectively it's huge sorry i cut you off i apologize oh so so um that again is is, is kind of like eagle vision and what you're talking about is like okay now how do we ground that into concrete action how do we tie up our camel how do we okay we've got faith we're faith this is an awakening you're saying that what we need now is to is to is to create new to, to organize in a way collectively as light workers or whatever you want to call it soul tribe in the same way that say the corporate elite are organized um so that well, I, would, I wouldn't say the same way, but I mean, there seems to be a switch from this hierarchy pyramid type thing, which none of us really like, into more of a network, into more of a online, online infotech. I think we, you know, we're going through stages of software and looking at what we have right here in terms of, of this was impossible in my day of having two people talking like this for free, out with the file and pop it up can see it. I mean, that's the type of technology we're dealing with. We're going from something that's impossible to something that is very inexpensive and free for all. I mean, that's I still put my mind in terms of the ability to create media by ourselves. And so I, I, what I see is like, I'd rather watch the people that I know. I'd rather watch the people that have done research along the same lines as I'm looking. And whenever I watch the TV now and I watch the corporate media, it, 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 it's so irritating or it's so unbelievable or it's, it's, it's like you've been fed this bad food all your life and all of a sudden you have like live organic food served to you by loving people and beautiful 
place and and you compare that with oatmeal or something you don't want to taste that anymore you, know, you can't consume that experience because it's the soul now is saying please give me truth you know, please bring something in that's going to enliven me and not you know spread this sort of fear-based model mm. and yeah. so I, I think it's more the media that we create and really create together about how do we solve the issues? Like what's media for? To give some story about that over there what we can't do nothing about? Or is it a way of us organizing together and bringing together remedies and solutions and actually implement, implementing them and doing the media ourselves? Saying, well, we did it. You know, this is our community, this is what we're doing. And we're showing us doing it. Why don't you do it too? not just to Canadians, but to everyone in the world, and to start to make coalitions of communities that are connected together in media networks, that are sharing knowledge in such a way that the people are, as you said, empowered, and as a power team, power groups, power families, and taking the internet and taking this and really turning it into a training tool to share knowledge between the people that have the knowledge and the people that have the knowledge. And that works. So I think the normal school indoctrination system is just gonna fall apart because you can get a better education, you know, speaking with you, who's, who's mastered something about teaching your child how to see through a blindfold. The children knew that you could teach them that and they could teach them in this forum. You, you, you might have 100,000 kids who just, who, who either for free or for $10 or for whatever, uh, gather a knowledge that is not available normal school curriculums because they will not allow the real knowledge to come out around how the mind and consciousness works. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so I, 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 do, I do see great things for the future in, and uh, people like yourselves and the other tribal communities of British Columbia, there's a lot of people who are very talented and very, very, uh, have broken through in areas which no one knows about. So I, I I think there's different regions across the planet that are going to start to bring out knowledge that is far in advance of what we're used to or very different. And it's going to spread to those areas that it needs to. I'm not so sure about the mass. They, they may be, you know, robot fodder down the road. <laughs> uh, but definitely there's a, the end game is playing out. And I would definitely want to start to look at building eco villages in the forest where you have food supply for five years you know all your tools all your power all your water is taken care of and to start to leave the big cities because if any i had my first you know kind of scared going you know three of the people has everything just shut down and uh, that's it like i just read a book a few months ago about the end of the world type scenario and within three days it was just this you know, every day the community would get more and more violent, more and more uh, you know, closer to starvation. And that's something which you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about. I would say preparation would be a wise. Yeah, I, th I, I, I agree with you. I think that that is, I don't agree with, I'm not, I'm not fully in agreement with that, that theory is, uh, I believe, maybe from a, a time in the past that maybe is in our cellular structure that we've, you know, on some level, either past life or DNA, we've been through times like that, very dark times where people go to those places. But I, I do believe that humanity is to evolve, has evolved into a level where, um, well, they saw it in, in Japan when they had the big tsunami and, and everything everything was shut down. They weren't getting any supplies and stuff, but people were opening their doors to one another. They were helping each other out. They were, you know, doing like collective meal planning and stuff like that. I mean, there was a lot of compassion and love. And, um, so for me, I believe that, you know, in one of these scenarios, actually what we'll see is we'll see humanity come together on a level that we've never seen before. Um, but uh, you're right. Like, why has this all happened? I believe this is all happening. Mean, if you talk to the, the Mayans that, you know, at whatever point we got into this war with ourselves, which is what it's always been, the war with ourselves, that was one of the big healings that I've had, like in that myself, not believing in myself, not loving myself, not 
uh, you know, maybe seeing that I am, you know, like, you know, the, the Christian Catholic kind of view that, you know, I'm this sinner. I'm this sort of like, there's this evil in me, you know, that is this kind of self deprecating self attack battle with self that I then project out onto the perceived enemy, which is someone that's maybe has a different view than mine. Um, but really the, the attack is with the self. And so the idea is that like, when this began, we started to war with ourselves. And through that process of war, we've created so much wounding and so much hurt and so much trauma that is carried still to this day. Because what happened was that it happened so fast that our ability to actually process that trauma, there was no, there was no, there was no opportunity for that. So it got passed down generationally. So we're all packing around a whole bunch of wounding and trauma on the on the on the dna level that uh you know we need to process but the only way to actually do that is if we come back together as a tribe we do it through this mirror this reflection through you me seeing myself in you and you holding me and me holding you in a way that you know we feel safe enough to be vulnerable and and to be able to 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 let go and and actually process that in, that trauma that we're carrying. And that takes really community. And that takes a tribe, that takes trust, that takes a whole bunch of, you know, everyone working together for there to be a lot of vulnerability. Because even in, I mean, people, I, I you know, I hang out with people from all levels of sort of spirituality. And even in the really high spirituality uh, circles, I still f see a lot of, wounding a lot of programming that is still perpetuating lies what i feel is lies about who we truly are um so you know like if say my company was around um creating uh technologies that protected people from 5g well then i would want to I would want to tell the story of like how bad this really is. I'd want to perpetuate the fear to the utmost because, you know, I'm going to sell more of my doohickeys, right? You know, this is happening even in very conscious people. We are perpetuating a completely limited concept, construct of reality. And so this is, again, a part of this battle with ourselves. So in the ancient cultures, what they would do is they would have a, they would have a facility outside of so when the warriors came back from from being in at war they would have a facility or a camp outside of the the village and they would have to go through these processes and so and these processes would help them to you know be in a circle of people that are holding them for them to go vulnerable for them to be able to be seen for them to process and actually feel and tap into that deep wound that deep pain that's inside and be able to express it and once it's out it's not living inside of themselves. And so, and then they would be, once they're kind of back in a state of coherence, then they would be allowed back in the village. So I do agree. We need to have a, we need to have a village and we need to have a process to get people back into the village, into their true natural self without all of this baggage and all of this rivalry consciousness that we're carrying around and commerce and this idea of competition, all that stuff. We have to rise above that. We have to create a collective coherent community that understands that we all have a gift to share. And when we come into true gift economy, it, that we will have abundance that we can't even imagine on this planet. So that's kind of, I, on that level, I agree with you from the fear based. I actually think that we are, we are more evolved than we can imagine right now. And we're and it's, and we're actually going through a major, another major level. One other thing I'd like to share real quick, brother, is this idea of, so uh, have, you, have you looked into the kind of adrenal, uh, adrenochrome injections? And Okay, so this is very on the reptilian level, right? Reptile is, um, you know, that's the kind of the lowest nature. It's the reptilian brain. It, it's, its purpose is survival. It, 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 it's fight or flight or freeze. It, 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 um, like a... A reptile will will have its area and his domain, and he will he will fight to death to let anyone else be in that domain. Okay, so it's it's a very territorial, 
energy and the, the reptilian bloodlines, they actually interbreed within themselves. They don't breed outside of their own bloodlines. So they've kept these kind of this very reptilian, very like they've passed all of their wealth down through trust, these trust structures. Um, and they've been controlling the planet by, ha by having this awareness and understanding of these, these monetary systems and all the rest of it. But they, the reptilian level of our being also um, has a very, very dark shadow, a very, even a darker shadow. And that shadow is pedophilia. That shadow is, is um, using fear as a way of empowerment. So what they do, what they've been doing, and this is you know, going to shock some people, is they have encampments all over the world. One is in, was in Wuhan, where they have children, babies, and they terrorize these babies, these pure life, pure life light babies, terrorize them, and the, the body creates this stuff called adrenochrome, which they extract, and they're using this stuff to keep themselves young. They're extracting the youth out of these children. It's a, it's a very satanic, dark thing. And it, according to some of the sources I've been hearing, it, it, it permeates through you know, a lot of our A-list actors and Hollywood and you know, people that are you know, very ego, egoic and want to stay young, you know, want to keep their youth and their, you know, because um, this is really a big part of it is that we, we have to face our death. We have to face our mortality. And these, there's this, I mean, look at Bill Gates. I mean, does he not look way younger than he used to look? I remember Bill Gates looking a lot older than what he looks like now when I see him. Okay. And that, that's the same with a lot of people. So I don't want to go into it too much, but what I'm saying is that this apparently right now is being extracted there is a the massive mission on the planet right now to to bring these children out of these encampments to to put these people behind bars um, and to end this shadow aspect of humanity. This is like a part of our. It exists inside of my belly, inside of your belly, inside of everyone's belly. We are one human family. The the hurt of one truly is the hurt of all, and the victory of one is the victory of all. This this came from my my dear elder. Uh, Chief Phil Lane and I, I truly understand this piece more and more every day that you know we have to own that we also played all these roles that we are a part of that because of our own unconsciousness and perpetuating fear perpetuating illusion we play a role in that shadow aspect of ourselves so you know so it's it's again not about pointing a, pick, a finger it's essentially looking how can, where am I perpetuating that but right now what's happening from what I'm being told, and I pray with all my heart for these children, that this mission is happening and it is healing. The, it's gonna bring these children up and they, they will take whoever these people are, they will, uh, pedof for pedophilia, they'll be able to um, take all of their wealth back from them. They'll be able to literally extract their entire wealth and all that wealth will hopefully go to these children and to healing all of these wounds that have been happening with the pedophilia and the satanic cult rituals and all that on the planet. And what will happen, I think, because of that, again, the hurt of one is the hurt of all, is that that pit, that thing that's been in all of our bellies and we didn't know what it was, once that starts to heal, we're going to rise in a way that we, we can't understand. We, the, the, there's higher levels of higher octaves of consciousness that are waiting for us, but this weight has been keeping us in this lower dimension of fear and illusion and separation. So I believe that we're about to see, because of this massive, uh, also this massive global uh, light worker operation of prayer, of goodness, of putting prayer into the grid, lighting up this grid, while also there's this operation that's going on to extract this entity that has been in the collective lower chakra working in the in the un, in the unseen realms 
And, and uh, that piece is, you can't hide from those that can see you and the light is coming and the light is here and, in, and, and the shadow beings are being exposed. And this is the, big, the greatest part of what I think is happening in this moment. And I think we're gonna start to, some of this is gonna start to hit the media, it's gonna be revealed. I hope, that's my prayer anyways, but you know, I'm just, I wanted to bring that piece forth just so that uh, you know, we can all pray for that together. Well, certainly in the media feeds that I see on Facebook and uh, other sources that that has been continually getting more and more attention and more and more, I guess, shock. And then when it really hits, right, it's just like there's that the veil or the boundary of human thought it doesn't want to accept it, doesn't want to look at it, doesn't want to have anything to do with it, just shut that up, make it go away. And now it's not. Now it's a whole other thing. Okay, bring it to life and let's deal yeah. with it. So that's our own reptilian part. That's actually the part in us. Just like we go to a job that we don't like. We have a partner that we don't love anymore. We have a life that we're not happy with, but yet we do it day in and day out. Why is that? It's because the reptilian brain, when you wake up in the morning and, and you're alive, it's done its job. That's all it's there to do is to keep you alive. It's not to keep you happy. It's not to keep you aligned to your highest purpose and good. It's to keep you alive. So, so the reptilian aspect essentially is what keeps us in that place of safety, a place of like, you know, again, even though it's, it's completely not aligned to your, to your heart, your, your heart is contracted. You're not happy but you're going to do it every day until you die because you don't want to, you don't want to die. I guess, you know, you're, you're just trying to escape um, the possibility of there being down that path of your highest purpose. There being a, some kind of a threat that's going to kill you, you know, cause you know, this path you've done it for so long. You haven't, you haven't died yet. So you're going to just stay in that. So people don't want to change. People are scared of change because of that reason. It, 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 there's a fear of change because it scares them that there's that that something is going to uh, change to a point where they're not they're gonna not have all of their creature comforts and all that you know so it's um, it's an interest it's going to be a great awakening once once it really hits the media and people have to look at it well it's gonna be a lot of healers that are gonna be needed on the planet. <laughs> I'm not so sure it's going to hit that media, but I'm sure the media will be created from the people that it hits. You know, and it's, it's like, you know, are the young people listening to the radio? I mean, the music that I hear in the festivals is not at all the media on the radio. And it's, it, and it's just this great divide is happening between attention and between interest. And I think that anyone who's on the 5D path or where there's a lot of attention upon any type of spiritual consciousness is distinctly different from those who don't. And so that divide is increasing on both sides of the edge. I mean, it's like the same because they've got to be stuck in some state. And so, but I, I believe that the answers for the future are in these other you know, higher conscious beings. And as you said, there's going to be a new generation of leaders, a new generation of people that are going to start to be influencing uh, the, the kids and the youth in a manner that cannot be anticipated by those who are trying to always put this fear of consciousness into our people. So the, the divide is going to get larger and larger between that, and they're each going to be looking at different media systems. Media systems. At some point, I, I think you know the war is going to be in terms of the who can satirize the other the better. <laughs> Humor is going to be the answer, and, and there's, they're, they're just as and something is as stupid as what they're doing or as devious, the only answer to the degree of the matter which brings that to everyone and uh, it's in this wrong place. So that's what I see. Oh, shit. I think we're here. I think we've come to the end. My speaker's not working. So do you, do you want to end it? Yeah, okay. So I'll, 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 I'll tail out um, with... Um the truth will set you free and love will prevail. <laughs>